Thank you to Capture One for sponsoring today's video. Use a link in the description along with the code co 23 faisal 20 to get 20% off your first purchase. Good morning, friends. So today's street photography POV is going to be a little bit different than the usual. Uh, I wanted to do a start to finish workflow so it shows a more realistic look into how I go about a typical day of street photography. Now I realize it's not super realistic because I am here in London traveling, but I wanted to still make it similar to my typical routine back at home. So it's about quarter past 10 here in London. I typically like to be out by 11 a.m. I am definitely not an early morning photographer, so you will rarely ever see me shooting sunrise. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love morning light, but I just can't. <laughs> so today I think I'll be shooting around Bank, which is sort of like the financial district of London. So we can expect big skyscrapers, a lot of people, people in business attire, which makes for cleanly dressed subjects, always a good thing for street photos. Normally what I like to do when it comes to deciding where I wanna shoot, I just pick a, a starting point and after that it's pretty spontaneous. I'll go wherever the wind takes me. Um, but I like to choose an area to start from that's going to be conducive to me taking photos right off the bat. I don't want to pick an area that isn't very inspiring to me um, because then that just starts the day off poorly because I'm frustrated and not finding anything I like. Obviously it's different here because I'm traveling, everything's going to be interesting, but this is usually what I would do back home in Boston. As for gear, I'm gonna keep it simple and just go with my XE4 and 35 millimeter F2. I've gotten really comfortable with this setup, so it's gonna be what I go with today. I know, what else is new? But honestly, it's as simple as that when it comes to choosing what camera and lens to use. Great, so I know what I'm shooting with. I know where I'm shooting. Do I know how to get there? Now I do.
Okay, so it is the next day. Um, <laughs> typically, when it comes to editing my street photography, I don't really go straight into editing right after a shoot. And there really isn't any philosophical reason behind it other than I'm just usually too tired after shooting all day. But it is nice to not rush, you know, the whole process. I'm shooting for myself. Like I was saying, I'm shooting for myself. There's no deadline here. Why rush the process? I can come back home, chill after a long day of shooting, and look over my images the next morning over coffee, like right now. Just kidding. It's orange juice. So we got the XC4 here. I'm gonna be importing these images into my hard drive, and we'll be editing these photos that I took in Capture 123. And yes, they are sponsoring today's video, but they aren't telling me to say anything specific about the new version of Capture One which is kind of funny, but um, they, yeah, they just wanted to have me show how I would edit photos in Capture One. So that's what we're gonna do today. However, there is one new feature of Capture One 23 that I think a lot of you will like, and I've personally been using it a lot. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. Right now, I need to import my photos. So I like to keep all of my images on this little SSD. This is a SanDisk Extreme portable SSD. This one is just two terabytes. So all of my images are on this, as well as the Capture One catalog that I'm going to be editing my photos in. So it's all stored on this external hard drive. So SD card, we're gonna plug it into the computer here. Plug in my hard drive. Let's open up Capture One 23. Okay, so this is Capture One. Automatically, it's going to recognize the photos from the card. This window's gonna pop up, and I'm going to look for the images that I took the other day. These are old images we already imported. Um, here we are. Important note here is I wanna make sure I'm importing it into the correct folder. So here we'll go to Import and do Copy to Folder. Since I'm importing directly from the SD card, I wanna make sure that I'm storing the original files on my external hard drive. So I'll go to the folder of my hard drive and I already made a folder for these images. I just sort it by the date and um, a little subject tag so I know a little bit more about what kind of images I took on that day. You know, if I just see a day, I, I have no idea what it means. So we're gonna import these images into this folder. So what this means is I'm selecting the images from the SD card, copying it into that folder on my SSD while simultaneously adding them to the Capture One catalog. So one of the cool new features of Capture One 23 that I've been personally using is the new groups feature. I'm assuming it's some kind of AI or machine learning where Capture One is looking for similar looking images and grouping those images together so this is really useful if you're taking multiple different photos of a certain scene. And as you can assume, doing street photography and having multiple images of a particular scene, it can be a lot, but uh, this new feature that Capture One has just implemented really helps keep you a bit more organized when you're culling through your photos. Um, so I'll show you here. On the left here, you can see it says group overview. And right now it's checked, but if I deselect it, you'll see this column just disappeared. I'll bring it up again. So this new column shows up here on the left. So these are the images that are within the group, and this is just the group, uh, I guess you could say, thumbnail. So I find this to actually speed up the workflow a bit for me because I can quickly see all the images in their own dedicated little space. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really, it's a, it seems like a small thing, but it adds a lot. So I'm just gonna cull through these images and I'll meet you guys on the other side. All right, so I've made some selections. We're gonna import and one of the awesome things of Capture One is I don't have to wait uh, to start editing these images. So this is an image here and I already know right off the bat that I'm going to 
keep this as a color photo because color is a huge part of this image, right? We have all the primary colors in this photo. We have yellow, we have blue, and we have red. And in a sense, color is the main subject of this image. Yeah, it's the back of some business worker, but um, it's this combination of colors that I really like, and that's what I want to emphasize in this edit. So the first thing I will do here is go into the Adjust tab. Um, okay, that is not the first thing I want to do. Let's undo that. Add a little point here to the curve. Just bring up the exposure a little bit. We'll go and bring the shadows down. So that just adds a little contrast to this image and at the same time add saturation to these colors as well. So that was me working in the curves. I also like to work under the exposure tab as well, as well as the high dynamic range. Really, I'll just play around with all of these exposure and uh, dynamic range tools until I get it to a place that I like. And honestly, when it comes to editing, that's usually how it goes. There's no real science to it or at least in my case, there's no real science to it. So I'm gonna go into the color editor and I wanna work with this yellow here. So we are going to select this tool and I can select that color on the photo. Um, and let's play with the saturation. We can bring it up a little bit, see how that looks. I'm gonna go work with the reds here on this bag. And I'm gonna bring the lightness down a bit now his shirt or his uh, suit is looking a bit more purple than I remember it being. Let's select the color of his suit and we can bring it more towards a blue. At the same time, I'm gonna actually desaturate it a bit. Now, lastly, I'm gonna go to this blue here on this wall and I'm going to bring the saturation down a little bit. Now to add more of a stylish look to this image, I can go into the color balance or the three-way color balance wheels and play around with some of the colors in the shadows, the highlights, and the midtones. I like to start with the shadows and you have to be really uh, subtle with your movements here because you can drastically see how much it changes when I move it around. Sometimes I like to just give it a little whirl around the wheel until I see a nice combination of colors. You can do the same with the midtones. And if you want to reset it, just double click and it'll bring it back to the middle. So I'm going to come back to exposure and tweak it a little bit. I might crop in just a little bit because I see a little something here in the bottom right corner. All right, I like this so far. I'm going to finish up going to the refine tool and add a little filmic grain to this. So. Um, I like to just add soft grain and bring it somewhere around 30-40% and there you have it. Alrighty friends, that was a look into how I typically go about street photography. Obviously not every day is going to result in photos that I like, so if I can come away with one or two, then that's a huge success in my opinion. Even if you come away with no images you like, you're still progressing because you just gained another day of experience, another day of practicing street photography and observing the streets around you like a photographer. Those days add up, so don't think you're not progressing if you're coming back home empty-handed. Lastly, I hope this look into my editing workflow helps you out as well. There isn't a whole lot that needs to be done in terms of editing my opinion, if you've already nailed down in-camera exposure and you have a subject or a composition you already like, then editing just becomes a subtle supplementation. Remember, you can use the code co 23 faisal 20 to get 20% off the latest version of Capture One. The link to that will be in the description. All right, friends, 
Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thank you.